Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Last week, we had a look at Red Citadel, and you know what? It was very exciting. But since then, building work has been, well, springing up a fair bit more. And, well, there's quite a few citadels on the Heavenly Tower. And today, I want to try something that rather intrigues me. The little star range which shows the, the difficulty of these stages is exactly the same for Zombie Citadel. And I'm really intrigued as to how they can possibly make this the case. Or... Did I find the last stage of the Red Citadel easier than I perhaps should have? Today I would like to find that out by going straight from the Red Citadel to Zombie Citadel, this time. In Heavenly Tower I've had a strat that I absolutely love. Just stacking dragons and legs. This, I reckon, pretty wacky, but... We're going to go for it, because I do love zombies and no gacha. It's just my little thing. Very little thing, because it's actually realistically just floor 27 where that's my thing. But, oh well. This first stage shouldn't be too much of a challenge, and indeed, we have a fast unit to help us go and win. So this is why we don't start off on the first quote-unquote star of difficulty. It's because there are zoges, but they are quickly dealt with by Hypermister. Much more quickly than the base itself which is only now crumbling. One rich cat for us, and let's keep moving on. Floor two for floor you. Right, we'll start off with a Manic Macho legs this time. It's always a always a nice way to do it, I feel. Then we'll follow up with a Hyper Mister, some quick meat shielding, maybe even a worker cat upgrade. And, oh, I sense some monies that could be forthcoming from this kangaroo. Indeed, they are. Let's get a Bahama in for a nice smashy smashy, and then more Hyper Misters for more speed, and power. We are successful in floor two. 100,000 XP again in floor two. That is competitive. Great. I am excited for how this can actually really help you along in the early game. Like, you don't usually get rewards this good. Let's do something different this time and bring out... Ooh, dragon stacking, I reckon, if we've got a Leboin. It probably won't be, you know, so troublesome that I'll have to actually think about how I'm dealing with it, because, well, this is floor three, right? But it's nice to have the little thought. And as the stack slowly arrives, our Hyper Misters are regulating the base perfectly fine, and it's all gone. The Manic Macho Legs closing that off. Floor four, a uh, cautionary Manic Eraser to start us off. Not sure we need to be cautioned right at the moment, but it's fine. In fact, let's be gung-ho, let's be fast! Yeah. A Bahama, I reckon, will be a good one here. Run it through and see what it can whack. Hopefully the Zori, yes? Yes, what's the story in Balazori? It is a story of death and winning for us. Go on, A Bahama, straight through to the base and whack finishes it off. Very nice. So far, I'm getting the sense with these stages that they're kind of just like outbreak stages. Here's a moon outbreak stage, I guess. We've got Gravy appearing halfway through the tower. I do quite like Gravy. Oh, now you just made me think of food. We'll get Hyper Mister out. We'll get these two meat shields out. We've got a stack of two legs, which frankly, for a Gravy at this stage, should be fine. We'll then save for a Bahama, because a Bahama, if not unfortunately timed, can be very good indeed here. We'll finally get our Holy Blast out, which I guess means that we're just being a bit slow. The attack from Gravy did not kill a Bahama, and in fact, just provoked another attack more quickly, allowing us to win with greater efficiency. Floor six, we are now on the latter part of this citadel. We're gonna get Hyper Mister. Manic Macho Legs as before, Manic Eraser, and I reckon really this is actually kind of the fastest way that we get these kind of levels done. We got a Zangru, which is, you know, in, in many a level, absolutely terrifying. We're gonna get Jamira out, not sure if that's gonna get anywhere in time, but A Bahama is already out and already making great progress, and that is actually all we need. There's loads of Zangru's about, but it actually doesn't matter. 400,000 XP. I'd be interested to see if I could get that level done on the beginner account. Let's move on to floor seven. Okay, those guys will have a Manic Eraser out then. Another Hyper Mister. Save up for a Bahama again. I mean, it's a pretty potent combination, and one that I think works well. It's Miss Hacker. You and your incense are slowly travelling towards me. There are some obstructive zombies in the way. Hopefully, Manic Macho Legs will help with them, but there's a we should hopefully be able to make headway into with a Bahama. However, a Bahama is being 
mega distract by these little peons, I'm concerned that it may befall a fate before it can destroy Hacker, although we've gone past it anyway. Okay, well, we'll open up our view because we do now have the classic zombie two battles. And I'm going to get little flying out as well. Jamira dealing well with those little peons. And there's a zeal gone by the looks of it, or at least underneath the ground. And there's Hacker there being dealt with, but we beat the base anyway. Two different battles. Always pretty difficult to keep track of. Floor eight. Oh, you do spoil me, Battle Cats. Basically free money. Let's get an eraser out. Manic Macho Legs and a normal kind of match our legs. This is just immense money, actually less immense money than I thought, but enough to get an Ava Harmer, do a one whack of a Zellaboodle there, get loads more monies, and start proceeding forward. That's a lovely kind of speedrunning strat. It's a Zor! That's a little bit more interesting then. Ava Harmer just by itself with an Otter there might be a problem, but not too much of a problem. It's not too strong, it's been dealt with, and again, we have two battles going on, and oh my god, it's you! It's James and the giant face peach of purple. Luckily, that and the Zor are both in the same place now, so Abrahama, forgiving any peon antics, is gonna be whacking out against the base. Okay, it tried, it died, but that's fine. We've got a mega stack of powerful enough stuff to deal with that Zor. Not a powerful Zor, definitely not. <laughs> 750,000 XP, Four. Floor nine, we're into the no continues. Let's see how exciting it do get. Who we got? We got a Jackie Pang. Okay, that's fine. We'll just put some legs out, cautionarily, do a work cat upgrade because you know what they say, when the no continues enters, strategy begins. Another worker cat upgrade, little flying, some more meat shields, and then I think we're gonna start stacking. Make it a kind of floor 27-esque strategy. You know, I don't need to move forward too quickly. We'll just build up a clump of stuff that's great against the old zombies. Another King Dragon. Two more of our lovely Erasery Meat Shields. A massive load of zombie kill with synchronized knockback. That was very nice indeed. Now enough money for Abraham. That rushes forward with the rest of our stuff. To the base, activating. Oh my god. Lots of Zushes. Let's freeze as much as we possibly can. They are fast and frenetic and mad. But we have a big stack and it just <laughs> ridiculously immense damage from the little flyings. I love them, but oh, 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 oh. that sloth is pretty chunky. That was very powerful. Okay, so we're going to need to come up in, in bits for our stack. And you know what? I'm, I'm sensing that this, this really does feel more difficult than the red one. However, Jamira is being beautifully strong and tanky. The sort of meat shield of its own, protecting my massive load of little flyings that are just delivering an immense amount of damage, clearing up the stuff that is burrowing from beneath the ground to try and unsettle us. So that's really good. I'm glad I brought little flying along with me. We'll bring along Hyperman for some extra regulation. Managed to get our worker cat all the way up to level eight, so monies are certainly not a problem here. So we'll just spam whatever we've got, really. I think we've got in the pipeline some excellent stacking units. And I know we do, because this stuff works on floor 27. So the cannon we've got isn't gonna be helpful against the sloth, which does make things yet more difficult. It is gonna be a big challenge, I reckon, getting rid of that sloth, because it does seem uber powerful. And if it's uber powerful, that means that its health has also been magnified to uber levels. Just so much of my stuff dying in one fell swoop. Well, we're gonna send a neighbor Okay, fine. We were all right. It it <laughs> it was fine in the end. He's hyping it up again, but it's not actually that bad. Well, I, I guess that's better than failing. And we've still got a floor left, so a little bit of difficulty tolerance left in the tank. Top floor! Let's go. Let's see if we can do it. No gacha. I sincerely hope so. We'll keep the holy blast on because I imagine it'll be a lot more helpful here. The sloth, I feel, must be an outlier. Instant worker cat upgrade instant eraser just in case there is something fast there is not something fast we've just got some creepy zoos those guys i guess i'm not sure i've even seen them before they look great though the one at the front kind of i know it's just like zombie crosses on the head but from a distance it kind of looks like an imprint of a country on a world map you know, like a purple zombie sea i'm over analyzing this but the animations on those guys are actually probably my favorite animations that i've seen in a long while they look fantastic. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of glad they didn't just 
zombie kill die because I'll be able to see them again. And while I marvel, gives us an opportunity to upgrade the worker cap to put us in good stead. In that spirit, we will also start stacking other stuff, including more dragons. We'll put out a holy blast right now. We're actually getting a little bit overwhelmed while we don't have a big stack out because I've been focusing on upgrading the worker cat. That obviously leaves us a little bit vulnerable in a sense. And I think those guys are, are, are pretty powerful and pretty persistent. I'm hesitant to put out a little flying yet because I kind of want to be fighting them each of the enemies for a while so that we're not moving forward too quickly and we just have a ginormous stack to deal with whatever comes out. So that will be my strategy, moving forward slowly in a very kind of Floor 27-esque way. We'll bring out the faster and more destructive stuff like that when we get problems like a Zatch biting onto our base like a nasty little boy. Manica Razors are just marching to their own tune way out in front, but they haven't activated the base, so that's fine. And I love the sense of distance. The Cat Cannon indicator is visible, and it's a, it's a little Zyklone boy. Okay, we see you again. And Zor, oh, this is going to be complicated to represent and keep an eye on. We have Gravy in the distance in the front there, but we're going to focus in on this battle here, because I feel like this is the more pertinent and dangerous one. Lil Flying's are definitely going to be a thing that we want to use. I'm going to freeze all of them for a brief bit of peace and quiet. But as much damage as little Flying's do, we're not making that much of an indent. I'm glad we upgraded our worker cap when we could, but I probably could have done with upgrading it more because we are not doing so well. This is, um, yeah, th this, this isn't happening. We'll give that another go. Okay, worker cap, definitely my focus this time. My stuff will always split off, so I wonder then whether I should just focus on my worker cat upgrading, use something like Little Flying, and just send a little sort of decoy vanguard to the front to activate the boss stuff, and then start stacking from my base and push back through. It's kind of what I do in Floor 43, so we're gonna take influence from that and try and do it that way. Little flying indeed in actually getting the zombie kills is getting us loads of monies. We're already up to level seven worker cat. It's been bounced right back to where the meat shields are, which is actually very convenient. That's soon gonna warrant us enough monies for a max worker cat. And then we can just quite simply push forward with something like hyper mister and another little flying, and that'll be fine. All we need is enough stuff to trigger the bosses from the base. Then we'll start stacking for real. So what I need to do now is get myself a nice little nest egg. Although I feel that hypermister may have been a little bit of a mistake because it does run very quickly indeed and hasn't given us the best opportunity to get loads of monies. But yeah, th that decoy dying isn't too much of a problem, therefore. We're going to start putting some cautionary erasers out to situate ourselves a little bit away from our base, but not so close that we just get immediately annihilated. Freeze you. I'm liking this way of doing it, but this stuff is still so powerful. Crikey, malikey. I'm not sure we're going to be able to do this, no gacha, you know? I'm not liking our odds. Okay. I've chosen to go for two gacha units here. We've got Hajiri and Hectorweight Cat. Hopefully that's going to be better for regulation and Hajiri will have lots of strength against zombies. I've also brought a Rich Cat so that we can just push forward with a Vanguard and hopefully have max monies by the time we start stacking for real. And when I bring a Rich, might as well bring a Sniper as well, give us the best chance of making the Rich worth it and the items worth it in general. Let us start pushing forward then. A little flying, some meat shields, some legs, and one Hajiri. Go on, you can do it. And I reckon that will probably do. We'll complement this slot with the occasional Amanica Razor, and that should carry us to the enemy base. And there you go, absolutely lovely. Hajiri already doing very good work. Oh, however, over here, it's getting a little bit hairy and scary. I guess just start my stack now. We're getting relatively close to max money, so although these are moving forward more than I quite like, the boss wave is going to knock them back. Fantastic. Well, let's scroll forward a little bit and see what's going on at the front. They're trying their best. They're making a valiant little effort, doing some damage, which will be good, but we'll focus back over here. 
and we'll get an A Bahama out, freeze these, get some big damage hits in, and there we go. One of the Zyclones is gone, thank goodness. Look at the difference that a little bit of gacha can make for you. The knockback is immensely useful. Thank you, Ecto. Wait, we've got Zor underneath the ground. Abraham has been caught out by the zombie teacher bear. That is unfortunate. We've now got two battles again, but roughly in the same place. So we'll expand out to have a look at both of them. My main concern is now this one. Very close to a base. Oh, but the Battle of Hajiri and the Zyclone is won by Hajiri. Who gets a zombie kill while being knocked back, but not killed? Unfortunately, there's more. There's a lot more. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that doesn't work. So we'll have to return to this at some point and work out a way to complete it. But my Heavenly Tower dream is stalled. Thank you for coming along on this journey up a different citadel. Join us next time where, I don't know, I'll bid you goodbye. And I hope you enjoyed.